I'm Jake with Senka Sen, and today we're talking about tab and slots. I'm really excited about this. I use tab and slots in my designs all the time. But maybe you're not familiar with tab and slots, so let's talk about what it is first. So originally, you take your design and you have a female slot, so a hole in your part, that'll actually locate into a male tab that goes into that slot and that holds it together. So this little box here that I have, we have four tabs and slots in each corner. So as I put it together, it holds itself together really nicely, right? And that's the beauty of that design. So if we're needing to weld something together or even hold it in a certain location when we bolt it together, it's a great fixturing mechanism that you can incorporate into your design. But as you're designing this, it's important to remember a couple things with regard to the slot design. Anytime you put a hole in a part, you're introducing a new area in which the part's weak. If it's prone to high vibration or a lot of stress, you might see cracking in the corners of a slot, especially a square type of shape. And so if you have a square slot like this, you will eventually see some cracking that'll be in the corners. There's an easy way to reduce this stress and cracking in the corners and by simply just throwing a little tiny radius in the corner. Just by putting in a small radius like this one, we reduce the stress in the corners substantially and you won't see as much cracking. One important thing to note though, is if you do put a radius in the corners, you do have to increase the size of that slot by the radius in order to make sure that the tab still fits into that slot. You can also chamfer the edge of your tab if you wanna do it that way, but you are gonna be prone to having a little bit of a sloppier fit with this design. The next best thing that you can do, and this is what um, I prefer to do if I have the option, is to put a full radius in the corner. So make a full half circle in each corner. That half circle reduces the stress exponentially on this part. And you won't see as much cracking or stressing, if not at all, especially in a high vibrational type situation. But this one, you also have to increase that diameter of the slot or the width of that slot to your tab um, to that full radius of those corners to ensure that it slides in and fits. A lot of people don't like this because then you end up having a little bit more slop in your design. That slop in that design sometimes makes it harder for things to be put in the right place. The next best thing is to do a dog bone design. And that's simply putting a corner, a hole in each corner, and then softening those edges, radiusing those edges into those corners. What this does is it allows you to have essentially a square hole that has a softened up radius. So you're able to make the slot the same exact dimensional size as the tab. These things that we're doing to the slots, we can also do to the tab. We can soften those radiuses and stuff on the corners of those tabs to create a less stress in those corner joints. Lastly, it's important to know the dimensional thickness of your material. It's great, you can go onto our website. When you select the material, you'll see the dimensional thickness in both imperial and metric to fit your guys' needs. When you're designing that slot, we recommend you being at least 10 thousandths of an inch larger in diameter and width than your tab. Your thickness of your material is gonna be the, the width of your slot. Make sure you're at least 10 thousandths of an inch larger than that and you'll have a nice slip fit. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.